All right, gentlemen, I have another really quick and very useful tip for you guys today. And it appears that Blender has a very large gap within its uh, vast array of uh, modeling tools. And what I'm talking about is that there is a particular tool missing, which is very useful, uh, which would be very useful if it would exist, but it, it turns out that it does not. It does exist in another form, which is a lot more complicated than it should be. And let me show you uh, a little bit more precisely what I'm talking about here. We made a video yesterday where we were modeling this shoe over here, and I showed you how to create these holes uh, in the side of the shoe, in the canvas of this shoe. And now the time has come to fill in these holes with these little eyelets, which we would use for creating uh, or for running the shoelaces th through the hole in the shoe, right? So we've created these eyelets, and now we have to put them into place. We have to place them exactly into this hole, so they have the same, so they're completely aligned with the hole and they're placed inside, and they look like they're they're smoothly and properly placed and fitted in there, right? Now the problem is that there is not really an easy way or a simple way to align this object uh, with those holes, right? So I figure out a way how to do that, and that's what I'm going to show you right now, okay? So it turns out that the only way that we can uh, fit this hole in here, well, let's, let's talk about the very uh, primitive way to do it first, which is the wrong way to do it, all right? Which might be intuitive at first. And the, the way to do that might be that we place our 3D cursor inside of the hole, and then we snap the we snap the eyelet into the hole and let me just enable my screencast keys again so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then we might try to rotate this eyelet so it kind of fits into place into the hole, all right? And now on this particular model, we could probably get away with that because it is an organic model. So these little imperfections are not going to be very noticeable. But if you, if you really need to place this in such a way that it's completely perfectly aligned, so it has an exact right angle that you need, this method is not going to work, all right? Because we have to be precise, right? So, Another way that comes into mind that you might be able to do this, if you were to align your view with this uh, with this hole, and then if you were to kind of align the object with your view, then you would be able to fit it into place perfectly. So let me show you what I mean by that. We can fill in this hole with F, and then with Shift-7, we can align our view with this hole, okay? I'll just make sure that we're doing that correctly because it seems that it takes us into a completely different direction when we do that. But if we fill in this hole, we have a very flat uh, surface there, hopefully. And we align our view with that hole, okay? Now we're looking at this hole from the bottom, so that, but that, that doesn't really matter. So now we have our view aligned with the, uh, with the uh, surface inside that hole. And if we could now align this eyelet with our view, that would be perfect. But the problem is that we can't really do that, okay? There is no tool to align uh, an object with your view once it's already been created. Now, I know what you're thinking. Once you add a new object, let's try to demonstrate quickly. Once you add a new object, let's say we add a plane, we have a very uh, easy and available tool over here which we can use to align the plane with our view and that's perfect, right? The problem is you can't do that after the object's already been created, okay? At least I could not find a way to do it and I've spent a considerable amount of time trying to find it yesterday. So the only way that I figure out how to do this is a little bit more complicated, it's using a constraint, but don't worry, we have a very simple, uh, we have a very simple solution for that, okay? So again, we have a already finished object over here, and we can't just align that with our view uh, since we already worked on the object. It's not a newly created object, right? So we have to first align our view with, the, uh, with this uh, hole here. And then the trick is that we can then add a new object, such as an empty, and then we can align that new object with our view. And then after we align that new object with our view, we can align the old object with that new object, which means we have to have a new, new object in the middle. So it's kind of like a rig uh, using constraints, right? It sounds a little bit more complicated than it should be, right? But don't worry, because it's actually a very simple solution. So I will just demonstrate to you quickly how that w might work over here, okay? So let's delete the whole uh, the face that we created in this hole, and let's just move to another face over here. And let's fill in that hole over there so we have a flat face with which we can align our view. And let's also just bring our eyelid over here closer to that hole, okay? So we're going to place our 3D cursor uh, into this uh, hole, into this face. And we're going to press Shift-7 once again and align our view with that hole, okay? Now here the problem seems to be that we have some inverted normal, so let's just correct the normal on that uh, on that face here so that when we align our view, it we're looking at it from this direction, not the other direction. Now we can align our view with this face over here. So now we have the right angle. So if we were to now create a new object and align it with our view, it would be perfectly flat and perfectly aligned with the hole, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do, all right? So we're going to, with our 3D cursor placed in this uh, hole here, we're going to add a new object. And that new object is going to be an empty over here. And that empty is going to be a single arrow, okay? 
Now, when we create that single arrow, it's just pointing directly upwards uh, in the global, uh, in the whole world, right? So now we have to uh, change the direction, change the alignment so it's aligned with our view, right? So once we added it, we get this little menu at the bottom here, and we can just change the align to view. And now the arrow is pointed directly towards us, towards the camera, towards uh, our perspective as the as the as the viewer in the three D world, right? And now if we go back to looking at the model from around, we can see that this arrow is pointed in that direction over there, somewhere to the right of the shoe, right? And we can scale that down a little bit, and you can already see I did the same thing on the other side here with a couple of uh, a couple of other uh, constraints or a couple of other empty objects over here. So this is exactly the same thing that we're going to do, all right? So now we can just delete this face that we created inside the hole. And now we know that this arrow here has the exact right angle that we want. It's the exact, uh, it's exactly the same angle as the normal of this face, which is created inside if we fill in uh, this hole here, okay? So what we can do now is we can just place this eyelet at the beginning of this uh, arrow that we created here. And we just have to copy the rotation of the arrow. Uh, so we have copied the, the, ang uh, the angle information of the arrow onto the eyelet, right? Now, if you were to uh, do it very uh, in a very primitive way, you could just copy paste the rotation for the X, then the rotation for the Y, and the rotation for the Z axis onto the eyelet. That's the manual way to do it. It, it would work, but the problem is uh, you have a few extra clicks there, and you can I can save you some clicks using the using a simple constraint, right? So let's say we take this arrow over here, and let's say we're going to rename that to something like uh, let's say uh, we already named the other ones on the other side to one, two, three, four, five, six, and up to eight. So we're going to rename this, we're going to set this to let's say one one instead of just one. And the reason that we're renaming it is because when we add a constraint, we're going to have to have a name for this object because we're going to have to select that object and tell Blender, hey, we want to copy the angle of this object onto our object. Okay, so we have to recognize that object. So then we can select our eyelid object. And we're going to find our object constraint, a little object constraint properties tab over here. And inside this little menu, we're going to take the copy rotation constraint, and we're going to add that to our eyelid. And now it's very simple. In our target object, we just have to select the object which we created over here, which uh, we've named before. We've named that 11. So we're going to find number 11 in this uh, constraint in this target menu. And as you can see, immediately, the object snaps to a different angle. And it's exactly the same angle as this arrow over here. And now we basically just have to do the same thing with all the other uh, with all the other uh, holes over here. So once again, we can try to uh, we can try to align our view with the other object, okay, or with the other surface here. So we can just select that correct to normal. And we can align our view with that. And once again, we'll just create a new empty and just change the alignment to view. And then we can duplicate this eyelet snap it into place. And then the second arrow, we're going to name that 22 instead of 11. All right, so it's one one, then it's two, two, we're going to scale that arrow down. And then on this second uh, eyelet, we're just going to change the target object to 22. All right. So now that we have that different target object, it's pointing in a slightly different angle. And then we can easily also just move it in and out because we have the right angle uh, that, it's, uh, that it's facing towards. So if we just uh, press, if we just press a G, and then we select an axis for movement, we can press uh, the Z axis twice. And then uh, it will move up and down on that axis relative to its rotation relative to the object, right? So we can just move it inwards and outwards and try to make sure that it fits correctly into that hole. And then you just do the same thing for all the other holes, uh, and you, you repeat the same rig. As you can see over here, all these uh, eyelids are perfectly aligned with the shoe, and we're good to go. And this is probably something that's going to be very useful for many other situations uh, that you might uh, come across when you're modeling something else. So I hope some of you guys found this useful, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.